It's tofu time! Which for normal people means food, but for nerds it means keyboards. This super compact 65% keyboard from KBD Fans is already super nice. However, we want to make it better. Can this dope compact keyboard get any d doper? Stick around or skip around to find out. Grab a coffee, sit down in your favorite sweatpants and hear for yourself. This video contains the behind the scenes and sound tests. Before we dive into the build, we want to listen to the before and after so you can get a taste of what we're going for. The mods are minimal, but the results is worth it. First, we need to disassemble the keyboard. We start by pulling off the keycaps to access the PCB, which is the circuit board containing the electronics of the keyboard. On top of the PCB, we have another plate where you put the switches. In this case, an aluminum plate. Oi! It's aluminium, in it? Yeah, maybe there's a go. <laughs> You can get this plate in a variety of options depending on the attributes you like. You can get plates in many materials like carbon fiber, polycarbonate, palm, which is short for polyoxymethylene. That's probably not how you say that. And for 4, which is a high density fiber, and brass. We don't have all of them here, but you know the drill. The metal ones are stiffer, obviously, while the rest of the bunch offer more flex. I guess you just have to try them all to find your favorite. Since we will be lubing the switches, and it's a good idea to just clean up everything before we go inside the keyboard, we'll start by pulling the switches out of the aluminum plate so, so we... Sorry. I don't know about you, but I find pulling the switches out of the plate kind of zen. It's satisfying to have them pop out after you use way too much force to wiggle them out. It's always a gamble if you destroy them or not on the way out. When all the switches are out, we can start unscrewing the board and get to work on the inside. Mainly the tape mod today, because that's all we have going for us before we get our new parts. Make sure you have full control over the screws so you don't run into issues later when you want to reassemble it. At a later time we did re-lube the steps for the spacebar, as it was way under looped and sounded quite scratchy. That's semi taken care of now, but in this video it's still suffering a bit. We don't have plate foam for this particular video but we sure have purchased it for upcoming builds. We'll focus on tape modding the PCB, even though there is case foam in this kit. For the tape mod today, I'll be using Painter's masking tape. I found this to work really well, and I have yet to experiment with other options. It takes away the hollow poppy sound you can find in many keyboard default setups. As of now, I'm just rolling with what works.
apply one layer of tape, it's overlapping a bit and I don't put too much consideration into it. Just don't forget to poke holes for the screws and make sure make some cuts for the USB-C plug. When you're done, slide it back into the case for reassembly. The switches we're working on today are new to me. The 62 gram tactile koalas, super comfortable with a noticeable bump, paired with the NP profile switches, it makes a marvelous typing experience. To lube the switches, I use a lube station and switch opener from KBD Fans, plus a no brand set of tweezers, brushes, and switch puller. The lube itself is a Crytox 205 grade 0. I start by opening the switch and putting the top housing aside while I place the spring, stem and bottom housing in the designated areas in the lube station. When it comes to lubing, I want to lube all contact points to eliminate any scratching sound. The side walls on the bottom housing get some light brush strokes and the pin where the spring lives gets any excess lube basically. I lube the top part of the spring and flip it around. This way I can hold it tight and lube the other end. I, I know, I know, bag lubing the springs would probably save me quite some time, but I just haven't gotten to it yet. For the stem, I use the stem holder, which is an essential tool, and give all outer sides a tiny drop of lube before brushing with a few light brush strokes. You're supposed to be left with a glazing surface, like a transparent sheen, if you end up with white, you've gone too far. I try to stay away from the legs on the stem, so I don't ruin any tactility of the switches. Alright, that's pretty much it for this mod. When you're happy with lubing, it's time to reassemble the keyboard, get the PCB back into the case and screw it down. Then we'll add the aluminum, al aluminum plate, add your keycaps and enjoy your new build. Hi, son. Son. Till next time, happy lubing.
and stuff. Bye.